Well, it's steady for the market, so let's get talking to a couple of companies then. Shalby is one company which is in focus. The hospital is possibly eyeing key acquisitions in markets such as Delhi and Kolkata to cater more to the influx of international patients and the possibility of them growing from Bangladesh as well as Nepal. Shane Shah, uh, who is the president of Shalby, joins in to discuss this in detail. Shane, hi. Welcome to the show. This is Ekta. If you could start by just telling us about uh, what the plans is when it comes to acquisitions. You all are looking at markets such as uh, Delhi as w and, you know, therapies which are not core to you all, which is basically, you know, uh, orthopedics. 40% of your re revenue is from there. So you're looking to diversify. Tell us your plans and tell us how exactly are you probably going to even fund these acquisitions. Sure. Good afternoon, Ekta. Thank you for uh, having me here. I think uh, you're right. Uh, you know, we are looking at Delhi and uh, Calcutta as potential markets uh, for us. Um, the reason why we are looking out uh, at the moment is because, you know, we had an internal benchmark of reaching a certain level of ROCEs, uh, you know, after our listing, uh, you know, until we kind of go for further acquisitions. And, you know, at the moment we are at about uh, 16 to 18 percent ROCE. For the hospital business and that is the reason we are looking out uh, now for potential acquisitions that can be value accretive to the group uh, these uh, markets as you uh, as you correctly mentioned uh, you know drain a lot of medical tourism from uh, across the south region as well as delhi is uh, very well connected to many other countries as well uh, so you know we, we we do believe that these will add uh, you know uh, these will be good strategic fitments uh, for the group uh, with regards to the focus on uh, orthopedics, uh, yes, uh, so Delhi and Calcutta will be multi-speciality hospitals, which is what we've been doing for the last several years. Uh, the new business model that we've come out with is the franchisee model. And through the franchisee model, we will kind of establish standalone orthopedics centers of excellence, which are 30 to 40 bed in not only metros, but tier one, tier two, tier three towns as well. And here we'll be focusing on the entire orthopedic speciality, which is knee and hip replacement, spine surgery, trauma, uh, arthroscopic surgery, and, and emergency care. So, Shane, what would the uh, size of this acquisition be? You have run 125 crore rupees in your books. And since we are talking about international uh, medical tourism picking up, uh, how much has it improved for you, uh, say, versus COVID levels? Is it back to pre-COVID levels? Yeah, the, uh, we are sitting on more than 200 crores of investments as we talk today. Of course, uh, we have a certain amount of debt, which is why the net cash is slightly on the lower side. Um, having said that, uh, international medical tourism has been picking up significantly, uh, you know, after January. So January, we had the Omicron wave, because of which, you know, I think, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people would not uh, tra travel during that quarter. But I think uh, from quarter one onwards, we've started seeing a... Uh, a huge jump uh, in the in the from the international markets, uh, including Nepal, uh, including Nepal, Bangladesh, as well as uh, you know the East African countries uh, uh, like Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, etc. Okay, so traditional. And what we also see is you know that we are expecting over the next five years, uh, you know, we'll be seeing a 15 to 20 percent growth year on year, uh, you know, for the international medical tourism market. Now it's up to the hospital operators to you know see how much you know they can make out of this opportunity. Okay, so 15 to 20 percent growth is what you're expecting at least in the international uh, patients market. So that's a strong growth expected. But uh, Shane, if you could just um, dwell a little further because generally you all have been quite uh, positive on this whole franchisee model of capex, and that's what you've been focusing on. Is that changing now? Are you going to have a mix of franchise and acquisitions? Or do you think that acquisitions is probably the way to go, where you probably have more management control, uh, whereas you don't have that as much in a uh, franchisee model? Yeah, so uh, the way we would look at it is we would be now operating, Shelby would be operating three major verticals. One is the well, one is the traditional multi-speciality hospital business where, you know, we will be expanding, which, which are all multi-speciality hospitals, 200 to 250 beds each. We run uh, 10 of those. We will be adding uh, two, which is Mumbai and Nashik soon. And uh, Delhi and Calcutta, of course, is, you know, in the radar. Uh, so th this would be one of the segments. Uh, uh, the se second segment would be the implant business that we know of, that we operate from uh, California. Uh, so that is the second business vertical. And uh, the third business vertical would be the franchisee business, which is going to be only orthopedic focused. 
and these will be smaller standalone hospitals as, as we discussed and these will be on an asset light model so you're right uh, this is going to be asset light for us we already have two franchises operational in udaipur and um, uh, ahmedabad and we are going to start lucknow in next month and by the end of this year we will be starting uh, gwalior uh, rajkot uh, as well as kanpur Okay, so Shani, in these two segments, I'm not talking about the traditional business. Let's say talk about implants business. You did 26 crores of revenues in quarter one, uh, eyeing 100 crores in FY23. What is the long-term growth that you're expecting here? Also, in the franchisee model, is it is asset light, but at that in that case, what kind of growth do you expect in this particular segment? See, uh, for the implant business, we are very very bullish. Uh, in fact, uh, the way we see things is, uh, you know, in the next five to six years, we have a target of uh, reaching about uh, six to seven hundred crores uh, in the medical implant business. Uh, and the primary growth drivers uh, there would be the the, the U.S. business uh, uh, as well as uh, the Indian market uh, and some of the Southeast Asian countries. And we have built an ecosystem around, you know. the building this business and a lot of resources in terms of time as well as capital are being pumped in into into this business uh, uh this company that we acquired has been traditionally doing business so it has been a 27 year old company and has and is very well established in the us and japan market so it is going to be slightly easier for us uh, to penetrate those markets uh, india we have a lot of captive consumption as well but the idea is to really kind of promote these implants to other hospitals and doctors within the country as well so we believe the potential is huge uh, in this business um, coming to the franchisee business uh, uh, we we genuinely believe that Uh, the, the growth potential there is significant, but I will not talk about the numbers uh, uh, on on the franchisee business because these, these are still early days. So I think over the next six to twelve months, we'll be in a much better uh, much better position to give uh, numbers and outlook on on that business. Okay, it's interesting, uh, Shane, because you know you're looking at a uh, brick and mortar business really, which is uh, in a way parallel to what you do, which is basically the implants business. Whereas all of your peers are looking to get into the services part. Of the hospital space, which is basically ancillary services such as diagnostics, home care, uh, that is something that doesn't interest you. Uh, say, getting into something such as diagnostics, even home care, or any other uh, parallel service uh, to the hospital. See, we believe that uh, you know we want to focus on our strengths, uh, and our strength uh, is orthopedics. Uh, you know, where we are globally the number one player. in our topic so you know the with the run rate that we are going in we'll be doing between 14 to 15000 knee and hip replacements this year uh, the next highest globally is done by hospital for special surgery or maybe a rock child in the us and they do about one third the number that we are doing so that is the kind of advantage uh, you know we are at at this point of time so how do we make the most out of it so we see two ways one is the franchisee business where the potential is massive in terms of the opportunity that we are sitting on in india in tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 towns uh, where you know we can capitalize on you know all the five segments that i mentioned within the orthopedics business so that is something which can uh, be a huge number huge huge number over the next 3 to 5 years and the second one is the implant business where uh, you know the internal captive consumption is huge there are huge supply chain issues which are there in the market right now which the top 5 companies top 6 companies are facing the idea is you know how we can leverage on that and uh, create a market uh, in it for ourselves uh, where we have a captive consumption we have a brand to uh, leverage on and at the same time uh, the implant business is likely to grow at 15 to 20% for the next 8 uh, uh, to 10 years so you know it is slightly orthodox uh, uh, unorthodox but you know we believe that it is going to uh, Uh, do wonders for 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 our group in terms of uh, you know adding up to the total revenues over the next uh, f- five to seven years. Okay, all right, Shane. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us all those details. So that's the word coming in from Shalbi. Very bullish on the implants business. Can do around six hundred to seven hundred crores in terms of revenues in coming years. The stock is higher by eight tenths of a percent as we speak.